Some people said, John 10.10, 10, I came that they may have life and have it to the full. But life cannot be full without God's great blessings. Life cannot be full when great elements of life are missing, when treasures, when pearls that God would like us to get are not in our hands. What pearl could you be missing? Yan po ang ating pag-aaral ngayon, pinamagata nating find your great pearl. Salamat po Ama sapagkat maaari kaming makapag-aaral na yung salita ng buong laya. Salamat sa kalayaang umawit, sumayaw, tumugtog, magpuri, tumawag sa inyo. Salamat sa iyong walang sawang pagdinig sa aming mga panalangin, pagbibigay sa amin na aming mga kailangan. Patuloy niyo po kami, Panginoong Linisin, sa paglapit namin sa iyo. Kung may karumihan kang nababaka sa amin, ipatawad niyo po sa amin. Cleanse us, Father, with the blood of your Son, Jesus, and make us whole, make us worthy to come into your most holy presence, not because of who we are, but because of what Christ has done for us, that He has died for us, paid for our sins, and cleansed us from all iniquities. We receive your forgiveness, O God. We receive your promises. We receive your good words. And as we quiet our hearts before you, we pray that you may speak powerfully. Nawa, Panginoon, mangusap kayo. Mga pangungusap na kailangan namin marinig ang madinig namin. Mga pangungusap na nagpapalakas sa aming kahinaan, nagpapaliwanag sa aming kadiliman, at tumutuwid sa aming mga kalikuan ang mga salitang nais naming matanggap. Kayo po ang maging tunay na tagapagsalita. Gamitin niyo ang inyong abang lingkod na tungtungan ng iyong paa, kasangkapan niyo lamang, Panginoon, at kayo ang maging tunay naming tagapagsalita ngayon. We hide in the name of your Son, Jesus, and in His holiness, and ask you, Lord, in behalf of your Son, descend upon us, let your Holy Spirit come to us, lead us, teach us, bless us. Even as we are assembled here, we pray for our loved ones who are not with us. May you bless them also. At nawa, Panginoon, ito pong buong kongregasyon na ito, ipagtanggol nyo sa mga masasamang tao, sa masasamang espiritu, sa lahat ng uri ng kasamaan, kami sumisilong sa iyong kandili at patnubay, gabayan nyo po kami, manguna po kayo at nais naming itaas ang iyong pangalan. Papagliwanagin nyo po ang aming isip, nawa ang iyong salita, maging pagkain ng aming kaluluwa. Dalangin namin ang lahat ng ito, may kalakit na pasalamat, sapagat walang dudang naniniwala kami inyong dininig sa pangalan ng iyong anak na si Jesus. Amen. Sa Matthew 13, 44-46 po natin, makikita yung verses na naging inspirasyon ng mga perlas natin. Matthew 13, 44-66. The Lord Jesus Christ speaking, The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again, and then in his joy went and sold all he had and bought that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. Napakalinaw po na mga parallelisms ang ipinakita ng Panginoon. Ang kaharian daw po ng langit ay mistulang isang kayamanan na nakabaon sa isang bukid. At ang taong nakakita nito ay ibinenta ang lahat ng kanyang ari-arian para mabili niya ang buong bukid na yon na kinasisidla ng kayamanang pinahahalagahan niya. At isa na naman pong halimbawa, ang kaharian daw ng langit ay tulad ng isang perlas na hinahanap ng isang mga ngalakal ang pinakamahalaga at pinakaimportanting perlas. At sa haba ng kanyang karanasan, sa dami na ng perlas na nakita niya, nung matagpuan niya ang pinakamahalagang perlas sa ito, ang lahat ng iba niyang maliliit at mga walang kwentang perlas, iba pang mga alahas, ay kanyang ibinenta para magkaroon siya ng sapat na halaga para bilhin yung tunay na mahalagang perlas. At yan po ay inilintulad sa kaharian ng Diyos. The Lord Jesus Christ was speaking and He paralleled the kingdom of God to hidden treasure, to a pearl of great value. Alam niyo po ba na ang pinakamalaking perla sa buong mundo ay nakuha sa Pilipinas? They call it the Pearl of Allah. It's about 9 by 5 and a half inches ang laki. Subukan niyong gawing hikaw. Kaya anything of a good thing can be bad. No? Talagang 9 by 5 and a half inches ang laki ng perlas na ito. Pero ni hindi ito ang perlas na pinag-uusapan dito sa ating verse. Sapagat yung perlas na yan na nakuha sa Pilipinas at tulad ng maraming mahalagang bagay sa Pilipinas, ay inilabas na at nasa Amerika na ang perlas na ito. 
ay pinagkakaguluhan at napakarami na daw gulong nilikha ang mga dahil sa nag-aagawan sa perlas na ito. Buti na lang at hindi yan ang perlas na tinutukoy ng Panginoon. Sapagat ang perlas na tinutukoy niya ay ang kanyang kaharian. And the man who looks for it and finds it sells all he has and buys it. So napakahalaga po yung example, hindi lang yung kayamanan na nakita doon sa bukid ang binili, yung buong bukid na kinasisidla ng kayamanan na yon. Now the kingdom of heaven, the treasure, the pearl of great value, is none other than salvation. The kingdom of God. Kaligtasan ng kaluluwa, buhay na walang hanggan. Sa Matthew 3.2, sabi ni Lord, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. Sabi ni John the Baptist lagi, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is near. So ang kingdom of heaven na pinag-uusapan, yung totoong langit, yung pinupuntahan ng mga ligtas, yung kaharian ng Diyos. Matthew 8.11, I say to you that many will come from the east and the west and will take their places at the feast with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. So, paano naman tayo makakaupo sa isang hapag kasama si Isaac, Jacob, Abraham, kung hindi ang tinutukoy yun yung darating pang kaharian ng Diyos na nakalaan sa mga nananalig sa Diyos at mga ligtas. Therefore, we're talking about salvation here. Eternal life is worth more than all earthly things that man values, seeks, collects, and hoards. Mas mahalaga ang kaligtasan ng kaluluwa sa lahat ng uri ng kayaman ang hinahangad dito sa lupa. Kaya ang sabi sa Mark 8.37, What can a man give in exchange for his soul? Kumisan kahit gano'n nakahirap magpayaman ng isang tao, pag nagkasakit na, lahat ng kayamanan, uubusin, guminhawa lang, gumaling lang, at kung babayan tayo sa kagalingan ng ating katawan, ano hindi natin handang ibayad para maligtas ang ating kaluluwa. So yan ang unang-unang tinutukoy, yung darating pangkaharian, yung kaligtasan na naghihintay sa mga anak ng Diyos. But the kingdom of heaven can also be life on earth that has been saved and is actually safe from worldly, from earthly dangers. In other words, life on earth that is heavenly. Another level of meaning of the kingdom of God. The first level is the most obvious, the most literal, the kingdom of heaven which is yet to come. And yet, there is also a part of that kingdom that has already come. Paulit-ulit kumisan sinasabi ng Panginoon, the kingdom has already come. Pero hindi pa naman bumaba yung langit na daladala ng mga anghel. Hindi pa natin nakita yung mga ulap-ulap at hindi pa natin kasama yung mga saints of the olden days. So ano yung kingdom that has come? It is life that because of God has become heavenly. Life here on earth that is governed, ordered, protected, and blessed with heavenliness. At kayo, na mga tumanggap na sa Panginoong Yesus, tayong mga nakalasap na ng presensya ng Espiritong Banal at nakakita at nakadama ng pag-ibig ng Diyos, ang magsasabing, yes, the kingdom has come. May iniintay pa akong talagang literal kingdom ng Diyos, pero meron ng advance yan, yung nararamdaman ngayon ng bawat Kristiyanong nananalig, nananalangin, gumagawa ng mga gawain ng Panginoon, nagtatanggal ng mga kasalanan, nagsusuot ng kalinisan ng Diyos, napapalitan ng ating mga agam-agam ng katiyakan, ng ating mga alalahanin, napapalitan ng, ng kapayapaan. Alam natin, yes, the kingdom has come. Kingdom in the heart of the believer and kingdom a state of the heart. Marami pong mga salitang kingdom of God na tumutukoy dyan. Matthew 5.20 For I tell you, that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. Kung gagawin po natin ditong literal ang kingdom of heaven, meaning salvation, or that heaven which is yet to come, ibig sabihin pala righteousness ang daan patungo dyan. Pero alam po natin na by grace, the righteousness of Christ becomes ours. So anong sinasabing kailangan maging matuwid ka para ka pumasok sa kaharian ng langit? Kailangan ka maging matuwid para maramdam mo ang pagiging makalangit dito sa lupa para yung kaharian ng langit ay magkaroon na ng advance sa yung puso para yung puso mo maging extension na of the kingdom of heaven. And I tell you, only those who live righteously will experience the kingdom of heaven on earth. Kaya marami pong mga tao, kristyano na talagang tumanggap na kay Jesus, sigurado na sila dun sa kingdom of heaven that is yet to come, pero bakit ang buhay dito sa lupa ay mala impyerno pa rin? Kasi hindi nila nalalampasan yung mga Pharisees sa righteousness. 
In other words, they don't live a life that is surrendered to the Lord. So now we are talking about two kingdoms here. The literal kingdom yet to come and the spiritual kingdom that begins to be true in the hearts of believers who live in obedience to Jesus. Yun din yung pearl of great value. So what will you not sell in order to afford salvation, the pearl of true value? And then when you already have salvation, what else will you not sell to be able to buy the kingdom of heaven here on earth? Ibig sabihin, a life that is peaceful, a life that is quiet, a life that is godly. Merong mga tao eh, saved na nga sila, pero ayaw nilang ibayad yung iba. Ayaw nilang tanggalin ang kerida para tumahimik ang buhay. Ayaw nilang tanggalin ang masama nilang negosyo para umayos ang buhay. Ayaw nilang alisin ang pagsisinungaling at ang mga panglilin lang kumisan kahit kristyano na sila. Kaya tuloy, wala silang heaven on earth. Ang kaisa isang heaven lang na kanilang inaasam, yung darating pa, pero wala pa silang nararanasan dito. Pero yung mga matuwid, masunurin sa Diyos, nasisimula na nilang maranasan yung kingdom of heaven. Matthew 7.21 Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only those who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Once more, sa biglang tingin, parang salvation by works na naman ito. You have to do the will of the Father in order to enter the kingdom of heaven. If we're talking about salvation, then salvation by works. But if we're talking about heavenly life here on earth, then it's really achievable through works. Kailangan may obedience ka. Matthew 18.3, And he said, I will tell you the truth. Unless you change and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. So anong ibig sabihin natin? Mga bata lang ang pupunta doon sa salvation, sa kingdom of heaven. Unless kingdom of heaven also means a life of peace brought about by trust and innocence. Kasi yan po ang mga qualities ng children. They trust their parents. Kaya tahimik ang buhay nila. Pag sinabi ng magulang na, Sige anak, may kakainin tayo bukas. Akong bahala sa'yo. Tahimik ang bata, nagtitiwala sa kanya magulang. So kung tayo po childlike ang faith natin sa Lord, doon lang tayo nagiging tahimik, doon lang tayo nagkikakaroon ng kingdom of heaven on earth. At ang mga bata rin ay masunurin. Well, dapat masunurin. Nung araw, ang ibig sabihin ng bata, masunurin. Naiiba na yata ngayon ang kahulugan niya. Kaya kailangan ibalik sa dati, ang bata ay masunurin. Kaya kung childlike ang ating pamumuhay, masunurin tayo sa ating magulang na nasa langit, Payapa ang ating buhay and the kingdom of heaven will now become real in our lives although the literal physical kingdom is yet to come. Matthew 19.14 Jesus said, Let the little children come to me and do not hinder them for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as this. Once more, kung yung kingdom of heaven ay pipilitin natin maging salvation only, eh bata lang pala yung nasasave. But, if we extend its meaning to advance heavenliness here on earth, We've got to be childlike. And like children, we will enjoy peace. Kaya sabi sa Matthew 19.23, Then Jesus said to His disciples, I tell you the truth, it is hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. So kung salvation na naman yan, parang sinabi mo, mahirap sa mayama na masave. Eh bakit nasave si Nicodemus? Bakit nasave si Joseph of Arimathea? Ibig mo sabihin, ang mga kaibigan nating mayayaman, hindi masasave. Ang sinasabi lang dito, ang isang taong mayaman o masyadong mahilig magpayaman will never enjoy heavenliness here on earth. Because one, he has to work so hard to get his wealth. And two, he has to work harder to keep his wealth. Kaya mahirap sa kanya magkaroon ng peace and contentment. Lalong-lalo pa nga po sa konteksto ng panahon ng Panginoong Yesus, na halos lahat ng kayamanan comes from a great crime that you have to deprive so many people to be rich. You have to be cunning and you have to cheat or you have to cooperate with colonial powers, with oppressive political systems. That's how you become rich. Kaya halos ay talagang nawawala na yung kabanalan mo, yung kapayapaan mo. Kaya sabi ni Lord, it is hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. Translate, it's hard for a rich man to enjoy peace. Remember, in the context that being rich in those times involved depriving so many other people just to be rich. So paano ka nga naman magkakaroon ng kapayapaan nun? Kingdom is not only salvation in the next life, but advanced presence of heaven in this life. Therefore, it is very much tied up with the fruit of the Spirit. That when you live a godly life, when you live an obedient life, you enjoy the fruit of the Spirit. Galatians 5, 22-23 But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, 
gentleness, self-control. Hindi po ba totoo na pag meron ito sa buhay ninyo, para na rin kayong nasa langit? The kingdom of heaven is already upon you. Pagka kayo ay maibigin, meron kayong kagalakan, meron kayong pagtitiis, kabutihan, kabaitan, katapatan, pagpipigil sa sarili, kahinahunan, para na rin kayong nando na sa kalangitan kahit naliligiran kayo ng maraming impakto. Kasi impakto sila pero hindi kayo so tahibig ang buhay nyo. Nagagalit sila, hindi kayo nadadama, hindi kayo nagagalit para kayong may kalangitan sa loob ng puso. A godly, a peaceful, and a blessed life, the treasure, the pearl of great value we're talking about is worth more than earthly things that man values, that man seeks, collects, and hoards. Kaya sabi sa Matthew 16.26, What good will it be for a man if he gains the whole world yet forfeits his soul? Anong katuturan na makamit mo ang buong daigdig pero ang kaluluwa mo naman ay wala sa'yo, nasira, napunta kay Satanas? What will you pay for the pearl of great value? Nakita na po natin yung pearl of great value. It is salvation. It is also mean, meaning heavenly life here on earth because of obedience to God. What will you not pay to have that? Philippians 3.8 What is more, I consider everything a loss compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. Inuulit lang ni Paul yung tema ng perlas. I consider them rubbish that I may gain Christ. So sabi ng iba, Eh mano naman sa akin magsara ng negosyo ng linggo ng umaga kahit mabili. I consider the tubo rubbish compared to the peace, the joy, the learning, the strength that I will get from the Word of God and by worshiping. Pero iba na ko sayang ang kita natin, pinakamalakas paglinggo. So hindi tayo willing magbayad, kay Lord na yung perlas niya, atin na yung perlas natin. Kaya sabi, it is hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God, to enter the state of peace and bliss and happiness and joy. Kung uunahin niya na pahalagahan yung mumunti niyang perlas, kesa yung perlas na inihahandog ng Panginoon. At napakahalaga po, yung rich man na nakita natin sa parable, found the treasure on that piece of land. He bought the entire piece of land. So pag may nakita tayong treasure, you buy the field that surrounds it. In other words, you want peace? You want the pearl of a quiet and joyful life? You want the treasure? You buy the field that surrounds it. In other words, you want peace? Get the whole lifestyle that brings about peace. Get the whole environment that makes it possible, that nurtures it. Hindi pwedeng gusto mong peace tapos tatlong asawa mo. Hindi pwede yun. Hindi pwedeng gusto mong tahimik ang iyong buhay pagkatapos ang dami-dami mong ginagawang kasalanan. Kailangan yung buong kapaligiran na kinasisidla nung kayamanan na yon kasama mong binibili. Hindi naman sinabi nung makita nung mama yung kayamanan, sabi lang niya sa may lupa, bibiliin ko na lang po yung kayamanan diyan, inyo na yung lote. O kaya bibiliin ko lang yung one square meter kung saan nandoon yung gusto kong kayamanan at inyo na yung lahat. No, yung buong lote binili. The entire context, the entire environment that brings about this heavenly life on earth must be bought. May mga kakambal yan ng mga kasamang sitwasyon na hindi pwedeng ihiwalay. It goes with the treasure in which it is found. Yet very interestingly, brothers and sisters, the pearl of great value can also symbolize people. It can also symbolize situations, activities, things that usher and bring you to heavenly dimensions. In other words, this pearl can also stand for anything that makes heaven possible for you on earth. And this can include your, hold your breath, Your spouse. Kung meron na kayong asawa, yan ang binigay sa inyo ng Panginoon. Walang bawian, walang solian, pakiawan yan, walang pili. Can be your pearl. If you have found the good partner, the better half that brings you to heaven or to the kingdom of heaven here on earth, that is your pearl. You should buy it, get it, keep it. In other words, keep him or her at all cost. And, Also the field around her. Kumisan kasama yan mga kamag-anak, kasama yan yung kanyang mga ibang ugali na hindi naman yun ang treasure pero may nakapaligid na batu-bato kasama sa binili yan. Pakyaw eh. Kaya napakaganda ng kwento. Hindi lang yung exact treasure ang kinuha, pati yung buong paligid. Kailangang pahalagahan. 
Pay everything you've got to have or to keep him or her. Meron na kayong asawa, ibinigay ng Panginoon, huwag ipagpalit sa barya-barya. Huwag ipagpalit sa mga tinatawag ng aliman na kitsch. Yung magandang tingnan, pero basura lang. Yung mga dekorasyon, karamihan sa mga bahay, taga-collecta lang at tirahan lang na alikabok. Wala naman talagang katuturan. Kitsch. Huwag ipagpalit sa maliliit na bagay. Ako'y gimbal na gimbal, just a few weeks ago, merong isang nag-text sa akin. Sabi, we miss you, pastor. Isang kaibigan, malayo ang tinitirhan. Sabi ko, baka may pangangailangan ito. Bakit bigla ako na-miss? Sabi ko, may prayer request ka ba? Ito po isang kaibigan, kapatid sa Panginoon, napakagandang babae, napakayama, napakatalino. Biglang nag-ring ang phone ko nung sinabi kong meron ka bang prayer request. Kasi uh, gusto lang pala niya ng permission na tumawag. Binuksan ko yung door, may prayer request ka ba? At basag na basag ang boses. Iniwan po ako ng asawa ko. Napakahangal ang asawa mo, sabi ko. Napakaganda ng babae niya. Ito napakatalino. Napakayaman, iniwan pa ng asawa. Ang pinagpalit eh, parang mukhang talang ka nang umunguyanguya ng chiklet. <laughs> Hindi pinahalagahan yung pearl niya. Ipinagpalit niya sa alikabok. Kailangan, kung meron na kayong asawa, yun ang pearl niyo, you will pay everything just to keep this relationship. And that means counting everyone else, the competitors, the threats, the temptations, as worthless, as not worth it. Because that relationship may give you some thrill or fun or pleasure, but it will give you a hell of a life. Proverbs 31.10 A wife of noble character who can find, she is worth far more than rubies. Sino sa inyo ang kasama nyo ngayon ng inyong spouse? Itaas nga ang kamay. Titigan nyo nga siya kung katabi ninyo. At sabihin nyo, ikaw ang aking perlas. Diba? Remember, you buy the whole field, not only the treasure. Kaya sa Malakay 2.15, Has not the Lord made them one? In flesh and spirit, they are His. And why one? Because He was seeking godly offspring. So guard yourself in your spirit and do not break faith with the wife of your youth. Huwag daw makikipagkasira sa iyong kabiyak. The wife of your youth. Lagi na nating napapansin, ang mga maraming husband are interested only with the youth of their wife and not with the wife of their youth. Kailangan ko yung wife of your youth, nung tumanda na kayo, mahal mo pa rin. Kahit pareho na rin kayong mukhang matanda. Biruin nyo may pinagsamahan kayo, may pinagkatandaan kayo, mahalaga yun. This pearl can also be any really valuable person na dapat pahalagahan. But remember, whose relationship with you is not immoral or ungodly. Kasi kung immoral or ungodly, hindi yan pearl. Curse yan. Yan yung tubog sa ginto. Hindi totoo. This pearl can also represent a situation or position in the Lord's economy. A state of existence that brings heaven to you or that brings you to heaven. In other words, meron din yung kahulugan. Isang uri ng pamumuhay, lifestyle, position, na naglalapit sa'yo sa Diyos, nagdadala sa'yo sa isang heavenly life. Do not lose it. Do not risk losing it for cheap thrills, for shallow pleasures, for fleeting moments of glory, and for adventure. Do not let and do not lose peace, peace of mind, contentment, anointing, and blessedness for ungodly enterprise or relations. Napakarami na pong ganyan. Tahimik na tahimik ang buhay, umiimbento ng problema. Ang ganda-ganda ng buhay, biglang magkakaroon ng pagtataksil. Mga kabataan na ang sarap-sarap ng buhay sa pag-ibig ng mga magulang nila, magda-drugs. Mga kabataan na pinag-aaral mo, ang inasikaso ay magbiglang liko at maging pregnant before marriage. Mga kabataan na pinag-aaral, absent ng absent. Mga husband or wife na ang ganda-ganda ng buhay, mga ngaliwa, gagawa ng kataksilan, bakit humahanap ng batong ipinupokpok sa ulo nila? So this pearl can also represent that, a nice, good, blessed life that you have to pay for it. If you have to pay for it with everything you've got, do so. But don't risk losing it. Don't make a bad choice, a bad arithmetic. Kaya nga po sabi sa Mark 8.36, paulit-ulit tayo, what good is it for a man to gain the whole world, yet forfeit his soul? At si Moses, alam po natin niya na siya ay pinalaki ng Egyptian princess 
siya po ay adopted into the Egyptian royal family. At alam niyo po nung araw, at yun naman talaga ang tama, adopted children have more rights than biological children because it is your choice to have them. Kumisan yung biological children, hindi mo lang alam, sabi ng babae, ay, three months na pala ako, hindi ko alam. Hindi niya alam na pregnant siya. But you cannot have an adopted child without your full knowledge and without you really wanting it. Kaya pagka-adopted child, talagang mas matindi ang relasyon, mas matibay kesa sa biological children, at mas maraming rights. At ganun si Moses. Pero sabi sa Hebrews 11:24 to 25 Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to be mistreated among along with the people of God, rather than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a short time. He regarded this grace for the sake of Christ as of greater value than the treasure of Egypt because he was looking ahead to his reward and ladies and gentlemen, read to his pearl. Hindi inalintana ni Moses na siya ay mapabilang sa mga alipin at tinalikuran niya ang kayamanan na pansamantalang ibinibigay ng Ehipto sapagkat alam niya na hindi siya pwedeng maging tunay na kasangkapan ng Diyos kung mananatili siya sa panig ng mga Egyptians. At ano ang nagpalakas ng loob sa kanyang gawin ng lahat ng ito? Tanggihan ng mga sarap sa buhay at harapin lahat ng pait at hirap, the pearl of great value that he was looking forward to. What is your pearl of great value? What are you willing to pay everything for? Make sure that it has something to do with the kingdom of heaven. Because heaven and earth will pass away, but not the word of God, and not the promises of God. Itong pearl na ito can also mean your ministry. Do not exchange or risk your ministry for other preoccupations that promise worldly gain, but threaten with worldly troubles also, and worldly danger. Gano karami na ang singer, Bible study leader, elder, deacon, deaconess, pastor, na ang ganda-ganda ng ministry, ang ganda-ganda ng paglilingkod sa Diyos, pero ipinagpalit sa isang kasalanan. Ipinagpalit sa isang buhay na maaaring maging marangya, materially speaking, pero masyadong dalita at masyadong dahop kung ang pag-uusapan ay e spiritualidad. Gano karami na nalingkod ng Diyos ang nawala sa paglilingkod dahil ipinagpalit yung pearl of great value sa pearls of no value at all. Hebrews 3.1 Therefore, holy brothers who share in the heavenly calling, fix your thoughts on Jesus. Pag sinabi po natin mga kapatid, fix your thoughts on Jesus, it means so much. Naniniwala po ang inyong lingkod na walang panghihina na hindi lalakas, walang pagdududa na hindi matutugunan kung tayo'y tititig lang kay Jesus. Kumisan humihina ang ating pananampalataya dahil kapwa taon tinititigan natin. Kumisan tinititigan natin problema, yung hangin, yung bagyo tulad ni Peter, naglalakad na sa tubig, tinignan pa yung hangin at yung mga alon, lumubog tuloy. Pero ano bang panghihina natin? Titigan lang natin si Kristo. Ang pinasan niyang krus, ang tinanggap niyang mga hampas, ang mga sakit at sugat na tinamu niya sa kanyang katawan, ang mga pakong bumaon sa kanyang buto, laman at balat, makita lang natin yon. paano ka panghihinaan ng pananampalataya kung alam na alam mo kung gano'ng kami namahal ng Panginoong Yesus. Kaya sabi, siya ang titigan. Siya ang pearl of great value. Huwag tumiting sa mga kung ano-anong walang kwenta na maganda lang sa labas pero fancy. And when we look at the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of heaven is a desirable and the ultimate experience. Sabi sa 1 Corinthians 2, 9 to 10, However, as it is written, No eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived what God has prepared for those who love Him. But God has revealed it to us by His Spirit. Kahit napakarami ng nakita ng tao, nagawa ng tao, naisip ng tao, na invento ng tao, wala pang lubos na nakaunawa kung anong inihanda ng Diyos ng mga pagpapala para sa kanyang mga anak. So it's worth it all. Maiksing buhay, paglilingkod sa Diyos, it's worth it all. Mga relasyon na dapat tanggalin, mga habits na dapat tanggalin, mga sarap na dapat nang hindi unahin sa buhay dahil merong paghihirap na kailangan gawin, it's worth it all. The kingdom of God is desirable. The kingdom of God is also costly. It is gained only by losing its enemies by losing its antithesis, by losing its opposite, which is the kingdom of hell. Church, listen. Listen. 
listen well. Many people do not enjoy the kingdom of heaven because they prefer the kingdom of hell to it. Yun lang yun. Dalawa lang naman yung pinagpipilian eh. Ang nakakapagtaka, hindi naman naman kailangan maging sobrang matalino para mamaisip na bakit magugustuhin ang kingdom of hell samantalang may kingdom of heaven. And it is gained by buying the whole field around it, the whole lifestyle, the whole context. Matthew 9.17 Neither do men pour new wine into old wine skins. If they do, the skins will burst, the wine will run out, and the wine skin will be ruined. No, they pour new wine into new wine skins, and both are preserved. Hindi daw naglalagay ng bagong alak sa lumang sisidlan. Yung lumang sisidlan po kasi mga balat ng hayop na tinahitahin nila yung mga dulot gilid para makapag-imbak sila ng liquid. At pagka meron ng lumang lalagyan, nilagyan mo ng bagong-bagong alak, mapipila, sasabog, masisira yung lalagyan, matatapon ng laman, sayang lahat. Sabi niya, kung meron kang bagong alak, kailangan mo ng bagong sisidlan. Mga kapatid, kung meron tayong new life, kung meron tayong new spirit, kung meron tayong born again experience, it is new, you need a new container for it, you need a new lifestyle for your new spirit. Hindi pwedeng na-born again ka na, kumilala ka na sa Panginoon, meron ka ng bagong buhay, tapos old lifestyle. Hindi yan compatible. Sabi, pare-pareho lang masisira. Yung sisidlan at yung inilalagay, sayang pareho. A new life. Those who found a new pearl will have a new life. A new lifestyle. New values. Mga bagong pagpapahalaga, mga bagong pinahahalagahan at tinatalikuran ang lahat ng may kinalaman sa dating buhay. Kailangang mamili. Matthew 6.24 No one can serve two masters. Either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. Kailangan ka na mamili. Hindi pwedeng ipinagpapalit ang Diyos sa pera. Hindi pwedeng ipinagpapalit yung calling ng Diyos sa mas maraming pera. Hindi pwedeng ipinagpapalit ang ministry sa tawag ng pera, sabi, mahirap yan. Kailangan pumili ka. Pinakamahirap po sa buhay yung nagdadalawang loob. Kailangan isa lang. Buo ang loob. Hindi hati. Kung tinanggap na natin ang Panginoong Yesus, magpasya na tayo na magpakabuo. Mahirap yung hati. A one-half Christian is a one-whole nonsense. It is not possible. Either you're one-whole Christian or you're not in the Lord. So, kailangan maging matigas tayo, maging manindigan. Kailangan ng bagong wineskin for your new spirit. Hindi yan compatible with your old lifestyle. There has got to be changes. Philippians 3.8, what is more? I consider everything a loss compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them rubbish that I may gain Christ. Inuulit natin, ang lalo natin maintindihan, Sabi, lahat ng hinihingi ni Kristong mawala sa buhay ko, di ko pangihinayangan, ituturing kong basura na dapat lang itapon. Lilinawin ko sa isip ko kung anong mahalaga, the pearl of great value. The kingdom of heaven is precious. So do not exchange it for scrap. Do not risk losing it. Matthew 16.26 What good will it be for a man if he gains the whole world, yet forfeits his soul? So this kingdom of heaven, in all its meaning, is available to you. Salvation is available to you. Sabi sa Acts 16.31, Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. You and your household. So this is the kingdom of God that we want. Salvation, it is available. Kung hindi pa kayo sigurado sa inyong buhay, manalangin. Kilalanin si Kristo. Sabi niyo, naniniwala po ako sa inyo. Tinatanggap ko kayong Panginoon ng aking buhay. Patawarin niyo ako sa aking mga kasalanan, linisin ako at maghari kayo sa aking buhay, and you will be saved. And yet there is another kingdom, heaven on earth. It is also available to us. Heaven on earth, transcendent life. Yung buhay na nalalampasan ang mga balakid ng mundo. Nakakatawid ng mga dingding, lumilipat-lipat ng mga building na hindi dumadaan sa pinto. Transcending what physical barriers will not permit you to do. It is possible for us. Hindi yung literal, ha? Baka naman tumawid kayo sa mga padere, mangod good kayo, sisihin nyo ko. Ibig sabihin, yung mga dati hindi natin kayang gawin na kabanalan, nagagawa yan. Yung dati natin hindi matalikuran kasalanan, natatalikuran yan because of the power that the children of God receive. John 1.12 
Yet to all who received Him, meaning the Lord Jesus, to those who believed in His name, He gave the right to become what? Children of God. Alam niyo ba ibig sabihin ng children of God? Tagapagmana ng lahat ng ari-arian, tagapagmana ng lahat ng kayamanan ng Diyos. So, meron tayong kalakasan, meron tayong paninindikan. Kaya yan. Yung mga natatalo, nagpapatalo lang. Pero kung tayo magpapasya na manalo, sa tukso, sa hirap, magagawa. The kingdom of heaven is sufficient for all. Kamakailan lamang, meron isang mga commercial na lumabas na ginoglorify ang mga material things. Sabi, style, do you have it? Ganun ba ang ating mga iniisip lagi? Style, do you have it? Ang dapat natin itinatanong, heaven, do you have it? The kingdom of God, do you have it? This is what matters. When life ends, you will go to only two choices. The kingdom of Satan or the kingdom of God. And even in the kingdom of Satan, he will not be king anymore. Siya nga ang number one na parurusahan doon. Dito rin sa lupa, choice mo, anong life mo? Parang impyerno o malalangit? It's just a matter of choice. So pray for the kingdom of heaven. Pray for your spouse, your pearl also, your godly lifestyle, your ministry. Pay for these things with all you've got because they are pearls of great value. So are you still running after minor treasures? Are you still playing the little league? Are you still running after low-value pearls? Make sense of your life. Make sure that what you are living for is worth dying for. Kung hindi ganun kahalaga para pag-alaya ng buhay, hindi rin ganun kahalaga para isa buhay. Make sure that the things you're living for are worth dying for. Because if they are not worth dying for, they are not worth living for. Could any one of us be so foolish as to risk losing our precious pearl for fancy and low-value ones? So once more, look at your pearls. Symbol din yan, mga kapatid, ng anything that is cheap and fancy in your life. Nawa, itago nyo ito bilang alaala ng ating pag-aaral ngayon. Pero sasabihin nyo, ting nakikita nyo, ito, symbol din ng mga fancy, ng mga nandadaya sa akin. Dapat ito lang ang itago ko na fancy para ko lang maalala na huwag magtago ng iba pang mga fancy. So tatanggalin ko dapat ang aking fancy husband or wife kasi hindi ko naman talaga sa asawa. Hindi siya real. Tatanggalin ko aking mga fancy bisyo, fancy pleasures. Hindi siya totoo. Isa siyang kasinungalingan sapagkat nalaki ng bayad. Aalisin ko lahat ng mga hindi totoo sa aking buhay. You know why? Because Jesus is truth and only the truth sets free. And for some of us, this can be our day of realization and freedom that you should get rid of the fancy jewels in your life. That we should get real. Get real with God. Napakahalagang maalala. Titingnan tingnan nyo lagi, ano pa bang fancy ang natitira sa buhay ko? Yung hindi naman totoo. Anong mga kasinungalingan? Anong mga pagpapanggap? Kailangan ibahin. Because a new spirit must be in a new life, new lifestyle. New wine in a new wine skin. It's important. Hebrews 12, 16-17 See that no one is godless like Esau, who for a single meal sold his inheritance rights as the oldest son. Afterward, as you know, when he wanted to inherit this blessing, he was rejected. He could bring about no change of mind, though he sought the blessing with tears. Si Esau, panganay, kanya lahat ng birthrights, Minsan nagutom, yung kanyang kapatid na bunso, nagluluto ng isa lamang bowl ng lentils. Sabi, kainin ko naman yung lentils mo, yung ginisa mong munggo. Eh, ibigay mo sa akin ng birthright mo. Ibinigay naman dali-dali ang birthright. Sabi nyo, napaka-liit naman ng kapalit. Pero alam nyo, tayo ngayon, marami ring inaalaga ang iso sa ating buhay. Ipinagpapalit natin ang payapang buhay sa konting ligaya. Isinusugal natin ang ating katahimikan at kabanalan sa konting kasalanan sa konting pleasure, mali. Think of your treasures and thank God for your treasures. Thank God for your salvation. Thank God for your new life. Thank God for all the treasures that God has given you. Your spouse, your children, your parents, your ministry. Pahalagahan ang lahat ng ito because they are heaven sent. And remember, as you want to keep treasures, be a treasure yourself. Hindi ka rin dapat fancy sa pakikitungo mo sa mga tao. Hindi ka rin dapat fake. Be a real gem. Because you want only real gems in your life, be a gem in someone else's life. We ought to be helping one another. 
Heavenly Father, thank you for your goodness, for your mercy, for your reminders. Ano nga po ba ang personal na mensahe ninyo para sa aming lahat ngayon? Ituro nyo sa amin, Panginoon. Mga kapatid, manahimik tayo panandali. Isipin ninyo kung anong tunay na perla sa buhay ninyo ang nawala o maaari nanganganib na mawala dahil naglalaro kayo ng apoy, dahil gumagawa kayo ng mga mapanganib na bagay, dahil isinusuong nyo sa panganib na mawala yung kingdom of heaven, yung heavenly life here on earth, yung peace, yung blessedness. At kung meron tayong kasama na hindi pa kayo nakakatiyak na tinanggap yung Panginoon sa inyong buhay as Savior and Lord, do it now. He is only a prayer away. Manalangin kayo. At sa atin naman, na may naiwalang mga perlas, ngayon kinausap tayo ng Panginoon. Hindi tayo kinakausap ng Panginoon para tayo aliwin. Kinakausap tayo para turuan. And when God speaks, we should obey. Kung may ipinakita sa inyo ang Panginoon na isang bagay, isang tao, isang lifestyle, isang mabuting bagay na nawala sa inyong buhay, make a firm resolve. Nasisikapin niyong maibalik ito. Gusto ng Panginoon yung pearl of real value ang nasa buhay natin. Hindi yung mga fancy. Kung may mga fancy sa atin, mga hindi totoo, mga pagpapanggap na nakakasama sa iba, nakakalinlang, alisin natin ito sa ating buhay. So that we will really enjoy the pearl of great value. Manalangin, panandalian, manahimik, at tawaang pagpapala ng Diyos, maganap na ibigay sa ating lahat sa umagang ito.